Product provided by Nintendo. Thank you, Nintendo. Hello, humans! I'm Yo Schiller, and today I wanted to discuss Nintendo's recently released localized remakes of Famicom Detective Club. Nintendo released two games in this series on the Nintendo Switch, and they're visual novels based on two 1980s Famicom classics. The fact that these have been remade and localized holds a lot of significance, so I wanted to represent these games in some fashion on my channel. And to be completely honest with you all, I didn't exactly know what type of video I wanted to make regarding these games. I mean, sure, I could have just recorded traditional games play or a walkthrough like I usually do on my channel, but I felt as though doing so would kind of go against the spirit of the game. While I suppose one could argue that there are multiple points in which a player could get stuck and wish to see how to get to the next point of the game, I still overall felt that making a walkthrough for the Famicom Detective Club series of games just didn't feel right. And even though it's a visual novel and novels can be read or shared with other people, it just posed a problem and I just didn't personally believe that recording such content for my channel would be too engaging. Don't get me wrong, visual novels definitely have their place, and more interactive ones such as this serve as the general foundation for game design and game storytelling in general, so I just didn't exactly know what to do. So as you can see, I do find these games to be important, but recording the games for the purposes of a video definitely posed a bit of a challenge. So ultimately, I thought the best way to approach these games was to make more of an editorial type video. Just so we're clear, this isn't a review video, it's more of an editorial. I'm going to talk about my experience with the game, but I'm not going to be grading each individual aspect. Although I did like the visuals. You're going to hear me talk about the visuals a lot. But this is not a review. I consider titling the video something to the effect of what Famicom Detective Club's localization could mean for Nintendo's future, but I thought the more simple title of Is Famicom Detective Club Good? had a better ring to it. And if you're watching this video and just want to know a blunt, direct answer to that question, then I'm pleased to say that the short answer is, yes, it is good. Okay, that's it. Oh, okay, no, you know I can't just end the video there. There's a lot that one could say about these games, and I think I should elaborate on why these games are good. And for the record, I'm not really much of a visual novel guy. I think they have their place and can serve as very good fits on mobile devices and portable gaming systems, but I'm more of an ignorant gamer that tends to favor just, oh, I don't know, diving into a game with little thought rather than trying to follow a more complex narrative and pay attention to things. But Famicom Detective Club is more than just a visual novel. It walks the line between a more traditional storytelling experience where you, as a spectator, just go from one story beat to the next, to the next, to the next, but it also has a bit more interactivity than most other visual novels. It's not really a choose-your-own-adventure type of game, no matter what you will need to progress on with the story, but they are still games with the word detective in the title. And as such, you'll need to do some detective work to discover some details for yourself. As such, the game can effectively use a show-don't-tell method of storytelling in a way that a fair share of other visual novels can't. Every screen in the game is crafted with a purpose. Each background in the game is crafted in a particular way in case you want to check something. And trust me, I did that a lot. There, there, there was a lot of checking. There's no penalty for it, so I just checked everything. That's another reason why I thought just uploading gameplay to my channel wouldn't do the game justice. I am a slower gamer. I like to figure things out. Some other people might be able to figure things out immediately, and really, that's the beauty of the game. I checked on too many things too frequently, so I'm not exactly the world's fastest investigator, but I wanted to make sure that I did a thorough job. Other people, however, might have a more traditional experience with these types of games, and therefore might not have any sort of challenge or confusion when they play this game. And I get it. That's fine, but that's why it makes it difficult for me to discuss this game. The point I'm trying to make is that there was clearly a lot of thought put into constructing this game. I didn't really have too many aha moments, but there was some sense of satisfaction in trying to figure out how to move the plot forward. There are some details I wanted to connect, and a lot of information just kind of got thrown at me, but I was able to keep track of everything. And there were one or two moments where I tried to think of things logically, and that allowed me to progress onward. And then there were other parts where I just kind of had to experiment with everything, and that worked too. It really helps that the game's visuals do make any instructions pretty clear. The visuals are a huge step up from their original Famicom counterparts. It's very clear to tell what's something you can interact with and what's something that you can't. I mean, sure, talking about the visuals of a Famicom game compared to a Nintendo Switch game probably goes without saying, but I feel that this is an important thing to note because the visuals are probably the most prominent aspect in any sort of visual novel, these remakes definitely make it clear that the artwork is of the utmost importance. And on that front, the game does have a lot of charm too. It's not a comedic or whimsical game, but there is a sort of lighthearted feel at times. I mean, there's no hiding it, these games revolve around some really serious subject matters, murders, ghosts, blood, and whatnot, but the visuals are bright and attractive. I doubt a little kid's gonna see this and confuse it for something more lighthearted, but 
It's important to note that there is no point where I was ever particularly bored with the game's visuals. For a game with such a dark subject matter, it would have been very easy to really highlight darker colors, but this game uses the appropriate color palette for the scenes it wants to portray. For scenes that include dark and grim flashbacks, the colors are dark to emphasize the horror of the scene. But then there are more general scenes, such as a school or a building, and those are much more bright and colorful. It just makes it easier to look at the game, which is important because you're going to be playing it for long stretches at a time. You can quit and save whenever you want, which is great, but I mean considering it's a visual novel, it's trying to tell a story, I feel that it's important to try and get to the next chapter or to the next story beat before you put the game down. But on the topic of lightheartedness, there are one or two humorous bits in the game if you truly want to look for them. And I'm very happy about that, as it could have been very easy for this game to just be serious all the time and focus on nitty gritty imagery. I'm sure it still would have been fine if the game wanted to take that route but I'm really, really glad that it's not just super serious all the time. I mean, maybe it's just me, but the bright colors definitely drew me in more. The visuals almost look like they were painted, and the lighting looks pretty good, and the shot composition looks good, and the angles look good, and it just all works. And actually, I don't know how often other visual novels do this, but Famicom Detective Club really does a great job at making each environment feel... Uh, I don't really know how to properly describe it. I don't want to say real, so I'll say more lifelike? Like each scene is decorated with so many little details. And these details have some sort of life to them. What I mean is there are characters in the background that will move, cars will go by, lights will flicker, and it all just kind of feels cool. Like all I really needed to do was talk to this character but it's nice that there's another character in the background just kind of doing stuff. The atmosphere of each location in the game has several tiny details that help remind me that I'm playing a game with interactive features and not just reading a collection of text boxes on a comic book panel. The game looks good, and while I know that most games shouldn't be judged on their visuals alone, I do believe that visuals are probably the most important aspect of a game like this. But the other most important aspect is the story. Visuals and story. So this game nailed the visuals department, and the story, well, without giving away everything, I will say it is relatively straightforward. I I mean, you are a detective, there are some mysterious elements to it, but you're able to connect the pieces pretty well. The visuals kept me attached to the game, the story, it would have been very easy for the story to push me away, but it didn't. But the combination of beautiful visuals and a relatively well-structured story is enough to satisfy me. The game even quizzed me at times to ensure that I was actually paying attention to the plot and not just mindlessly mashing the A button on each menu. Well, the joke is on you, game, because I was paying attention and I was interested in the plot. I'll admit that I got one or two character names mixed up so it made some plot points confusing to me, but I was able to follow the game's plot and the game did a good enough job at making each character distinguishable enough to where I could remember the key plot points. So I think that works in the game's favor. So take that game! I passed those quizzes on my first try and good job at making it relatively simple to remember the plot points. And actually, on that note, I didn't have to look up anything either. I could see where people could get stumped and not know how to progress onward, but at least in my experience, I was able to figure stuff out. Sure, there were one or two moments where I just selected each option on the menu until a new dialogue box came up, but to the game's credit, there were a fair share of moments where I just had to examine things for myself and do things in a way that I thought were logical. I wanted to view this girl's neck. Oh, maybe I don't need to view the neck. All right, so now I'm thinking like a detective. Oh, can I interact with the phone? Oh snap, I can interact with the phone. I don't actually need to interact with the phone, I just wanted to see if I could. You know, that type of stuff. Now I know what I'm saying may sound like it's standard for most visual novel games, but even if that's true, I should note that this game has at least intrigued me with the visual novel genre. As a guy who generally doesn't play or view visual novels, this game at least piqued my interest a bit. No matter what, even if I play future visual novel games, I have to thank Famicom Detective Club for at least igniting that initial spark within me. It clearly feels like there was a lot of effort put into this game. I like that I can interact interact with the wall. I like that I can ask this character questions that are unrelated to what I needed to ask him about. I like that I can do all of this stuff. Also, I've hardly discussed it, but the music is awesome. Every song in this video comes from the Famicom Detective Club games, and they're just bangers every single time. They can either be lounge lobby music, or they can be this fun action-packed music, and either way, it just works. This is a soundtrack that I'm surprised that I want to listen to on my own time. These are not cheap remakes. Well, actually, they are. They're not that expensive on the Nintendo Switch eShop if you want to buy them. But what I mean is, Nintendo really wants these remakes to do well. They really want Famicom Detective Club to really join the ranks of their other popular IPs. And is it deserving of that? Well, let's go back to that straightforward question that I posed earlier. Is Famicom Detective Club good? And once again, the answer is 
Yes, the characters are nice, and I think that this series holds a lot of potential. I don't know how popular these games are or will be in territories outside of Japan, but in Japan, I'm fairly confident that they were well-received back in the day, and that's most likely why they even got remade at all. But now that they have been remade, let alone localized, that means this is a chance for new fans to get into the series and prove to Nintendo that there is renewed interest in this sort of franchise. Now, I'm of the belief that making games more accessible in general or giving them a new chance to shine can only be a good thing. And the fact that Nintendo is making these games more accessible and giving them new life puts them in an experimental position. If these games perform well critically and financially, whether it's in Japan or worldwide, it's possible that we could see sequels and other Japan exclusive content make their way stateside. So honestly, I think that supporting these games and their translations goes a long way. I played them and I enjoyed them and I wanted to try and share my enjoyment with you all in a video format that I thought would be most appropriate. I would definitely love to see Nintendo experiment with this idea, whether it's Famicom Detective Club or another visual novel concept made in a similar structure, and I would love it if the Famicom Detective Club series could become a much larger IP. But for the time being, I'm glad that I got to enjoy these titles. Hey, I did my detective work, I got through the game, and I enjoyed what I saw. For now, that wraps up this video regarding Famicom Detective Club, and I'd like to thank you all for watching. Once again, I'd like to thank Nintendo of America for providing this opportunity to me, and I hope to see you all in future videos. Bye bye humans! Whoosh! Hey, thank you for watching my video! If you want to continue to support my content, the best thing you can do is like this video and subscribe to my channel! All you have to do is click the little buttons down below. Also, please be sure to follow me on Twitter to stay up to date with my video schedule. My tag is at RealYoShiller. I hope to see you all in future videos! Bye bye Whoosh!